So what is passion? There are several basic definitions of the word. One can be a powerful or compelling feeling or emotion, such as good or bad, or love or hate. Another definition could be a strong, amorous love. We often hope to fall passionately in love with someone one day. But what about passion in a career sense? What about a passion where people dedicate a lifetime to a single field of study? If passion is such a fundamentally emotional thing, why do we put so much emphasis on finding a career we're passionate about? We often think it's stupid or foolhardy to make life-altering decisions based on feeling and emotion. Yet many of us long for a career that we can honestly say we're passionate about. But how do we pursue that passion? How do we have a career that we can honestly say passionate about? I think it comes down to a simple equation that I learned a few years ago. Passion equals curiosity plus hard work. So let's talk about my passion a little bit. Which is why. Sounds like an odd passion, I know. So I have a longer history with wine than most 21-year-olds should. And granted, my parents are British, so I was raised with a fundamentally different approach to alcohol in general. So at the age of 14, I had my first glass of wine, and I hated it. I think most people at that age probably do hate alcohol in general. But I was curious as to why do so many people say they love this beverage when it is absolutely horrendous? It's terrible. So over the years, as my palate developed, I began to enjoy wine, as I'm sure most people in this room now do. But I was still curious. And as my curiosity grew, I wanted to know what was the difference between Two Buck Chuck from Trader Joe's and the bottles of wine my family would receive at Christmas that literally cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So at the age of 19, I had another curiosity. I wanted to know, how does wine get from a grape on a vine to our glass? I wanted to know how it was made. So I got a job at a winery, and waking up at 4 a.m., going out into the dark, into the cold, working long hours, and you can't feel your hands and feet for 10 hours at times, was hard work. And around the same time, I started to write a wine blog. I had another curiosity of how does the wine industry work? Yeah, it comes, you know, from a grape into the winery and then into your glass, but how does it get from, how does it go through that process? And now, writing a wine blog, that sound, doesn't sound difficult at all. Anybody can write and put things out on the internet, but when you're working long days, out in the cold, when you have schoolwork to do on top of that, when you're dyslexic and you have to come home and write, that's hard work. So around the same time, I found out about a thing called the Institute of Masters of Wine. Essentially what that is, it's a person who can put their nose in a glass of wine and tell you the exact hillside that the grapes were grown that made that wine. To put that in a bit of perspective, there's 193 countries in the world. And just about every country in the world, except for probably Antarctica and Norway, make wine. It's kind of difficult. And I decided I want to become this person. A little more perspective. The Institute of Master of Wines program was started in the 1940s. And living in dead today, there are just over 300 Masters of Wine ever. It's a decade-long process, if not longer, and at the end of it, it culminates into an exam. And one part of the exam is where a candidate, candidate has to blind taste 36 wines and get every single one right. They have to say the exact country, region, and hillside that that wine is from. As I said before, there's 193 countries, and most of them make wine. To become a master of wine, 
I will have to write research paper upon research paper upon research paper. I will have to travel the world, which that sounds awesome, traveling the world. But if you have ever traveled before, you know how tiring and stressful that can be. And many wine-producing regions aren't really near an airport. I'll have to drink thousands upon thousands of wine. <laughs> Which, I know, it's a hard life. <laughs> but a master of wine, whether they're in training or in their career, can easily taste over 10,000 wines in a single week. Try having, you know, four or five cups of coffee in a day, and, you know, it's about the same thing. And through this process, through writing these papers, and traveling and drinking this wine, it's going to be hard work. In addition to that, to understand the terroir or you know, what goes into a glass of wine, you know, where it's from, to understand that, to know where this wine was made, I will literally have to eat dirt and lick rocks to understand the earth. So why do I want to do this? Why do I want to do something that less than 10% of people who sit for an exam pass every year, and they have to restart this decade-long process if they fail? Why do I want to stack the cards against me? Because it's my passion. You see, our passions, they don't just jump out one day and say, here I am, sorry I took so long, I'm here now, let's get started. Our passions, they're curiosities that grow over time. They're the little curiosities that you can say, you know what, I think I'd like to do that. I think I still have questions about it. And I want to answer those questions. Your passion are curiosities that when you ask yourself, am I willing to work hard for this? And you can say yes, then you know it's your passion. Through the good and through the bad, through the love and through the hate. When I'm at the lowest of lows and the highest of highs, when I want to quit, and when I know this is, there's nothing else I want to do, I'll be able to continue because I know that it's my passion. Because I've been able to ask myself, am I curious about this? Am I willing to work hard? So I ask you, what are you curious about? What are you willing to work hard for? And why are you not pursuing your passion?